This journey through the north of England to Cumbria is like taking a tour through history, back to the origins of the climate crisis. We're traveling through the industrial heartlands of the UK. In the 18th century, the Industrial Revolution was born here, and almost every aspect of life was transformed by the discovery of fossil fuels. At the time, it seemed like an amazing thing. Laborious hand production tasks were replaced by fossil fuel powered machines. It lifted many out of poverty and transformed living standards. However, today, we know there's a totally different side to the picture. Our relentless abuse of fossil fuels is transforming the climate and it's affecting the lives of millions. But one that we're seeing increasingly in the media is wildfires. From Australia to the west coast of America to the Amazon. But what about here in the UK? It's something I feel like we don't hear that often about. So I'm traveling to one of the country's wettest regions, Cumbria, to find out more. You can see why this area is known as the Lake District. It's lush and green and laced with waterways, the last place you'd expect to see wildfires. I've come here to meet a local wildfire fighting team, but first, I need to make a quick stop. You might be wondering why we're in a bike shop, and that would be a good question. Unfortunately, my beautiful green bike was stolen, so we've ended up in Kendall in a bike shop to try and get a new set of wheels. <sighs> it's a sad day. I could ride this, you could sit in the front, it'd just be the two of us through the Lake District. I can see it. I would love it. On second thought, I don't really fancy carrying the crew, especially up the hills around here. This is more like it. Travelling by bike is my favourite way to get a feel for a new place. I'm a tree hugger and I'm not ashamed to admit that. Come on, we're all tree huggers. Ah, oh, that's nice. Moments like these that makes me love traveling and doing road trips. Like just the spontaneous, unexpected moments where you catch a sunset reflecting off a lake. It's totally silent. It forces you to be present for a minute. <sighs> It's hard to imagine wildfires happening in a place like this. But riding through Winlatter Forest, there are clear signs of the damage they can cause. Look at this, it's just blackened tree stumps. This is obviously the extent of the fire um, from this top road here, right the way down the front of the mountain here. So the fire was all around here? It was, yeah. Nathan Fox is a forest ranger. He saw firsthand the devastation a wildfire brings. It started off quite insignificantly, and within no time, really, everything was ablaze. The blaze covered 500 square metres, taking nine fire engines and three wildfire fighting teams hours to get under control. It's devastating looking around. It's like a sort of graveyard of trees. This particular area is, feels remote. It's not far to jump this way and that way, and suddenly you're by residents and yeah, schools. Yeah. There's some houses just below us, over the lip of the mountain here. There was a real concern for them. That's what we need to really kind of bear in mind. It's not just the, the natural event of a fire, it's the implications that it has, not just for the forest itself, but actually all of the people that are surrounding it, living it, work beside it. Totally. And I think wildfires feel like something that's very distant until suddenly it's on your doorstep. Do you think that was a real? big wake-up call. Yeah, I think so. And I mean, you know, we've seen from other parts of the world, I mean, there have been lots of fires through Europe and, and I mean, you can see that on the TV or look at it on the computer. But actually, when your forest that you live beside is burning above your house, you know, that's, that certainly brings it home, I think. Yeah, it's a real wake-up moment, isn't it? It really is, yeah. The thing is, 20 years ago, wildfires this ferocious just didn't happen around here. I'm meeting Conrad Leather, 
a long-standing firefighter with the Cumbrian Fire and Rescue Service. As a firefighter, you've seen the impacts of fire firsthand and how it can affect people. Do you worry about a world where fires will be increasing? I suppose it was an ignorance, really, that somebody else's problem, wasn't it, really? which looked at people on the continent, uh, in South Africa, in Australia, America, it was, they were suffering from these wildfires. Uh, and yet I, I see it now, like I say, in my career, I've seen it grow and grow. And in this very wet county of Cumbria, we're experiencing wildfires. So that means anywhere is possible. I'm just curious, Cameron, what made you aware of the climate change in the first place? The first thing that really made us aware was the floods. So Calal flooded 2005 and we, it was totally unprecedented. That never, ever happened. Well, that was our first kind of indication that something untoward was happening. Subsequently, it's gone on and flooded in 2009 and 11 and 15. And my, my own house was flooded, so I actually experienced it personally. Uh, so that, that was the kind of one extreme. The other extreme is long periods of dry spells. And that gives us the wildfires that we've encountered. How has climate change impacted your job as a firefighter? When I joined, it was just unheard of. And now we've got wildfires every season, which is unprecedented. So we've got to make sure that our staff have got the training for that. Comrade has arranged for me to train with his colleagues on the specialist wildfire team at Sedba Fire Station and get a taste of what it's like to fight a real fire. Never know when we're filming this show what a day is going to look like. And that's what I love about it. Every day is different. Today I'm in full waterproof gear going into a lake with a team of firefighters bad way to spend a day. To fight a wildfire, you need water, and the nearest mains could be miles away. This machine is basically a giant pump that can suck water from a lake or river and pump it to the fire hoses. I suppose that's the advantage of using something like a lake is you've got infinite supplies. Yeah, I mean, you have to pick your water source sure. accordingly. <laughs> yeah. There's no point setting into somebody's pond. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shall I take a hose? Um, yeah. Look at that, that is absolutely massive. That's a hose. So it's a bit bigger than your garden hose? Yeah, that's a huge hose. This is the type of terrain that we're going to be dealing with when we do go to wildfires. Why not make myself feel useful? I roll it up. So if we go back for one more. Tell you what, it's hard work. I am sweating, dripping with sweat. Right, and I think I'm being called to do some more. Roger. Come on then. Quite hard work, isn't it, carrying yeah. stuff about all the time? I just can't go about how heavy it is. The pump's in the water, now we need to connect the hose together, which sounds easy, right? So pressure's on now, Jack, so we're gonna lift The pressure gonna lift. is on. So and we've got the spanners the right way around, that's well, it? that is the yeah. question, yeah. So Your right hand closest is righty-tighty. Right. Left hand closest, lefty-loosey. Lefty-loosey. Uh, oh, that doesn't feel like it's working. Why is that not going then? Is that just muscle power? <laughs> Go on, you show me how it's done. Yep, it's just muscle power. <laughs> right, one more try. Oh my God, I don't think I'm cut out for this. Training like this is a real eye opener, but I know I'll never face a real fire like these guys. And around the world, their job is getting harder, especially in areas that aren't as lucky with water supply. It has always been my dream to become a firefighter. The first time I saw a firefighter, I saw them as a superhero. Fire at Table Mountain on that day it was hot and dry and really windy. So everything that a fire needed on that day was the maximized. My name is Shanae Amber Maritz. I'm 20 years old. I'm part of the All Firefighting Team Chiliot crew. In April 2021, Shanae joined hundreds of firefighters tackling a blaze on Table Mountain. There have always been wildfires around Cape Town, but nothing quite like this. So on the day of the fire in Table Mountain, the weather wasn't on our side, it was mostly on the fire side. And the wind was 
much worse than it normally is. The temperature was hot and drier, which actually made it really difficult for us firefighters to contain the fire itself. It was the first time that I actually saw the fire creeping into the city. This wildfire wasn't just a problem out in the countryside. It tore through the edges of Cape Town itself, and the effects were heartbreaking. Firefighters were injured, and the flames devastated the university's library, destroying irreplaceable archives. Wildfires like this, which jump across the urban divide between countryside and built-up towns, have become a serious threat across the world, and will only get worse as temperatures rise. Hi, Shane. Hi. What's going on? If it looks like to me like the trees are all black around you. As you can see, this tree here is one of the scariest ones. This was one big tree, but because it got burned from the root inside, and then you would just have this few seconds you'd hear that creaking sound, and then it would just collapse down. Firefighters know these falling trees by their chilling name, widow makers. It was my first time experiencing big trees falling down. That was a bit frightening for me. I can't imagine what it's like to be in that fire full of flames all around you. It must have been absolutely terrifying. And I'm just in awe of what you're doing and your whole team are doing. I hope yeah. that this doesn't become more frequent. But even weeks after Shane and the Juliet crew helped put out the flames, the danger still isn't over. So when you look over there, this is the worst thing any firefighter wants to witness after two weeks of fighting a fire and expecting the fire to be extinguished and just witnessing a flare up happening right there. And when you get close enough to it, you can see it's an ash pit. So the roots of that tree is still warm. So once the wind picks up, it will just flare up again. As years progress and as hot as the atmosphere has gotten, we have been witnessing this after fighting fires for weeks. For Shane, becoming a wild firefighter is a lifelong dream, but it was inspired by a nightmare encounter growing up. When I was eight years old, I remember waking up to the smell of smoke in my house, and my mom woke me up and she pulled me and she told me that we have to get out. And then I realized that it was three roads behind us and people's houses were burning down, the people's shacks. And my mom, we all went there to look what was going on. And I remember seeing people crying, being hopeless. They could do nothing, and they were just watching their belongings being burned. And the moment the firefighters rocked up, I saw the impact they brought, the joy they brought, and the hope they brought. And I remember just taking my mommy's head and asking her, how do I become a firefighter? Years later, Shane got the chance to emulate those heroes. They told us they were about to create the all-female firefighting women's crew. We didn't have a name that time. We were kind of a way of showing that women can fight fires. If we failed, and there was no way for women to get back into the field. I'm helping nature and protecting nature. I never thought that I could do that. Having seen firsthand what can happen when wildfires hit her home city, Shane has real concerns about how much harder climate change is going to make it for firefighters to keep them under control. So what I'm afraid is that because of all the droughts we're getting in Cape Town, firefighters can't use water. We don't get that much access to water. I'm afraid there will be a time where we won't be able to fight fire itself and we won't be able to contain it. Juliet crew are fighting on the front line of climate change and they're feeling its impacts. What they're seeing and experiencing is the real story behind all the headlines and the statistics. And it really shows what's at stake. The field that I'm in right now, I've first-hand witnessed how terrible the seasons are getting, how out of hand fighting fires are becoming, and how my life is being put, on, put in danger every time I'm going to that fire. Across the world, wildfire seasons are getting longer, and the risks of a fire starting are growing. Firefighters like Juliet Crew are being called on more and more. I think when we think about people on the front lines of climate change, like Shane, our incredible contributor in South Africa, it can be hard to relate to some of the experiences they're having, especially if you live in a city like I do. And I, I'm hoping that today will give me just 
a little insight into what it is she does on a daily basis. For the next part of my training, firefighter Abby Pepper is going to give me a taste of what it's like to be on the business end of fighting a wildfire and show me techniques they use to put them out. But first, I need to brush up on my hosing skills. So to work this, one hand on there, one hand on the top, turn it on. And then you can keep turning it yeah. to get different amounts of pressure. A little bit like a very high powered garden hose. Yeah, exactly. So I'll let you have a go. Should we get on? Yeah, let's go. So why are the fire team wetting this part of the ground? We're just trying to cause a fire break. So if we soak it, the fire cannot get any further and will naturally then, the fire will start to get put out once it reaches us. Because of the nature of wildfires, the team never quite know what they're going to be faced with. As much as getting the hose on and getting the water delivery, it's about the strategic thinking. When the fire appliances are approaching, they'll be looking at the wildfire, they'll be looking at the wind direction, they'll be looking at what vegetation's around, where are the forests, where are the natural fire breaks. But yeah, it's good, you're doing a good job. There you go. <laughs> the crew practice their skills in a controlled environment, but even still, it's pretty intimidating. I mean, the heat this thing is kicking off is insane, and you just you feel that fear rise up inside you, like the adrenaline going the minute that kicks up. I wasn't prepared for that at all. And you can see quickly as well, can't you, from how dry the ground is, how quickly that it can spread. Yeah. And even though you can't see flames necessarily, the smouldering and the smoke will be spreading through. And you can imagine this on a 100 meter square. I know this is serious stuff, but eight year old me is very happy right now. Time to put the flames out. <laughs> I've only had a small taste of what fighting wildfires is like, and to be honest, even that was hard work. Yeah, really good. That looks like a really good job to me. My goggles are fogged up. First bit of oh fire. I broke them. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> I broke my goggles. SOS. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be a firefighter anytime soon. I don't think I'm cut out for it. It's definitely a lot more physical than I thought it would be. Obviously, we were just in a controlled environment and I was holding the hose for 15 minutes. But to imagine these guys fighting huge wildfires that take sometimes days, I mean, weeks to put out, um, it's such physical work, it's such demanding work, and it gives me so much respect for what these guys do on a daily basis. The wildfire team in Cumbria and Charnay's Juliet crew are seeing the climate crisis change their homelands right in front of their eyes. It breaks my heart to think my kids are not going to experience the same as what I've experienced. It's changing. It is that dramatic. That's everything from, from the flora and the animals that goes with it. This is the biggest threat that we've got. And, and you know, forget all the other stuff, you know, who, who owns which land. This is, this is global. We've got one little planet, haven't we? It's a scary thing to think about, but I'm getting more open as I'm becoming older. I'm seeing that more young people are stepping in, more young people are trying to do something. If we could actually do something now, maybe the future will look much brighter. There will be hope, you know. A couple of hundred years ago, we kick-started this great fossil fuel experiment here in the UK. And we're seeing the impacts of that all around the world. Wildfires are just one example. And it's those who've done the least to cause it who are suffering the most. So perhaps it's time here in the UK, we acknowledge our historical responsibility. And this year more than ever, it's time we step up and lead by example. In the next episode of Seat at the Table. Woo! What a welcome to Scotland. How can we bring back the world's lost forests? It looks like someone's designed this. No, that's just nature. It's a very low cost way of reforesting. Once upon a time, this would have been a thriving, happy tree. And they've sort of just sucked the life out of it. Yeah. With climate change, that could be the last nail in the coffin. People are not taking this thing seriously. <sighs> I'm sorry.